So, hello, hello everyone. My name is Maxim. I'm a, I'm a browser engineer from Egalia, and today we are going to talk about the delegated compositing, uh, utilizing Wayland protocols for Chromium on Chrome OS. And here's our today's agenda. So, first we'll talk about the goals and the motivations of the project, why we have Wayland on Chrome OS and why it's in, in Chromium. Then I will talk a little bit about what Lacrosse is. Also, I will need to cover a little bit about uh, the Chromium Display Compositor to give you some of the ideas why, how it works and why we actually needed the delegated compositor there. Then about the delegated compositor itself, the Wayland protocols, and a big picture, so picture of what we actually have. So Chromium and Wayland and uh, Chrome Wayland on Chrome OS. So there are quite a few vendors who are shipping Chrome OS on their devices. And as soon as the devices become, well, they are aging, right? So they are not receiving the updates. Uh, that results in uh, having them with the like, old browser and so on. So in order to improve that and improve the maintainability of the devices, it was decided to split the Chrome browser from the Chrome OS system itself because they're tied together. And that would also make it possible to receive them the browser updates. But how is it possible to do that? So the idea was to decouple the browser, as I said, from the operating system itself. That was called the Lacrosse project. And the Chrome OS itself, it has a system UI and the window manager called Ash. And yeah, Chrome was tied to that operating system. And at this point, there was also a Wayland implementation already in Chrome OS, and was it was decided to use Wayland. So basically, in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, the Chrome OS received an uh, own Wayland server implementation called Exosphere. It's currently used by Arc to run Android apps on the Chrome OS, and also Christini to run Linux apps. And in about 2016, we started to port Chromium to, to, to Wayland. And on Linux, you can use Chromium with uh, Headless, X11, and Wayland. So it was kind of a natural choice to, to, to employ that implementation and have a, have a browser run in them. And basically, Wayland is used for graphics and event handlings with the stable protocols employed and also with, with some custom extensions employed. And for the high-level features like file picking, uh, cross API is used. Well, it's basically Google's implementation called Moja IPC. This is like similar to Win32 and Cocoa. But what is Lacrosse? So Lacrosse is a project to decouple uh, the Chrome browser from the Chrome OS window manager called Ash from the system UI. So on this box, on the, on the green box, you see the uh, Chrome OS operating system. And on the yellow box, you can see the Lacrosse browser, which uh, using Wayland backend through the Ozone layer. The Ozone layer is basically an abstraction in, in the, in the Chrome, Chromium browser, which allows you to implement own backend. And as I said, on Linux, it's X11, Headless, and Wayland. And it's switchable in the runtime. Uh, for the Chrome OS itself, it runs on the DRM, but you, you can also call, use like X11 and uh, run Chrome OS emul emul emulator on, on your Linux device. So the Lacrosse was using, is using Wayland to communicate with EXO, which is in built into Chrome OS, which actually forwards the input devices and has some uh, graphics uh, communication there. But there was a problem. So this split resulted in performance and uh, resource costs. But wh wh why and how to mitigate that? And to understand, uh, to understand why it was causing a problem, we need to uh, switch to the Chromium Display Compositor and understand a little bit how actually uh, Chromium uh, draws frames. So uh, as you may know, Chromium has a multi-architectural, uh, multi-process architecture. So we have a GPU process or this service process. And also we have clients which are uh, the render process, the browser process. There, there's also this uh, 
video, video client which sends the video frames. So basically we run them, uh, we, we call them the frame sims. And uh, basically the way how it works is that if we are talking about GPU accelerated, acce this GPU acceleration and the GPU rasterization, the way how it works is that for example, if you take the render process, it prepares uh, paint operations for the compositor frame. Then, when we are preparing the, preparing the final compositor frame, we submit those paint operations to, to SKIA on the GPU process. That is called the GPU rasterization. And we prepare textures, and these textures basically uh, represent tiles if we divide the whole window to the tiles. So those represent tiles. And the compositor frames, they uh, have references to the styles, including some frame da data like uh, masks, filters, clipping, and other stuff. And on the right side, you can see the this service process, or simply GPU process. It represents clients as surfaces, and each of the surfaces has own compositor frame. So we need to aggregate all the surfaces into a single compositor frame, uh, and do the final compositing. So this is a high-level picture, high-level overview of, of how it was working before the delegated compositing. So Lacrosse was aggregating the quads that would uh, end up creating a final surface. And uh, that final surface was, of course, represented by a single buffer. It was sent over Wayland to EXO. Then, uh, in, in, in the Ash Chrome site, well, well, Ash Chrome, you can call it Chrome OS, it was like maybe getting some other frames from other windows, I don't know, some system settings if you open that one. And it was doing the compositing once again uh, in, the, in this step. So that resulted in uh, double compositing and bigger resources overhead. But how to fix that? And the solution to that was to use the delegated compositing. So basically, we left the aggregation step. We created our final compositor frame. But uh, the quads that we got, which are basically the textures, all of them uh, must have been sent over Wayland protocol to, uh, to Ash for the final compositing. And, and of course, I, I, I need to say, well, basically, this is about like uh, serializing the Chromium compositor frame, sending over that a couple of IPCs uh, through Wayland to Ash, and basically, it was at this sta stage uh, deserializing the, the the data that it received, and it basically created must have been creating the same kind of uh, browser frame for the final compositing. And in order to achieve that, a couple of, well, at first I was thinking that there's actually more things we implemented, like some custom things. But in the end, it, like, it wasn't that much. So when on subsurface, that is standard, right? Uh, each quad and, well, let's say we, we were sending quads as overlays. They were represented by our own surface. Of course, Wayland we'll buffers and explicit synchronization protocol because we want the job to be like uh, asynchronous. And the, the, the main thing is a uh, surface augmenter, right? Because uh, we wanted to have uh, this data to be sent from uh, Chromium, uh, Chromium browser, basically the compositor frame with this additional information like render corners, clipping, also pixel precision, this is one of the important things. And we needed to make our own uh, protocol extending the Wayland surface. Also we used, in the beginning, we used own uh, protocol for the single, single color buffers, but as soon as in the upstream, there is now, right now a single pixel buffer protocol, we just employ that one so that we don't need to uh, create a real buffer. At first, when when nothing was there, we were just clearing uh, a buffer to a, to, to a certain color, but that's not really efficient. Um, yeah, why, why we also needed to pass this kind of random corner and, and clipping information? And the, the reason to that one uh, 
is basically because when chromium sends, um, it rasterizes the quads to the textures, those do not have any masks, right? So uh, when we do the final compositing step, we apply those uh, mask filters and so on, and send them to, to Skia, which does the final picture for us. And, the, and for the pixel precision, precision the problem is that uh, Chromium basically works in the, in, in the, with the pixels, and as long as Wayland, Wayland uses deeps, it resulted some uh, pixels losses. And when, you, when it was compositing the, compositing the quads together, we could see some of, some of the glitches. For that, uh, to, to work, overcome that, we actually added some additional stuff to the surface segmenter and started to pass this information using VL, VL fixed, basically, which allows us to, to use some floating values. It, also, it was also required to update the, the VP port, this destination, and some of the other stuff like setting trust form, setting, setting trusted damage, because when we, for example, check, ch change the order of the, of the well, and well and subsurfaces, this Z order, we, at some point we don't need to recalculate the, the damage or we do need to recalculate it. So basically all that is uh, managed with this uh, additional flag. And there can be some other stuff, but I would say that was the most important one. And so this is the big picture, how everything is implemented. So we have like on the top Lacrosse this process and the Lacrosse browser. So Lacrosse Viz is basically uh, preparing the, fine, the frame with the quads and sends over the Wayland to the Ashram, which then uh, creates the same compositor frame as, it, uh, as Lacrosse would you know, have if it wasn't delegating but was you know, composit compositing itself. Prepares the final frame, prepares the overlay and sends it to the DRM and that's it. You have the final frame with the system UI and the, the browser uh, content as well. That's it. Questions? No questions? Yes. Uh, do you think that desktop uh, removal toolkits like EDK or QT could also benefit from that? Well, I can you please repeat the, repeat the question? Well, I think you'll have to repeat the whole thing. Yeah, you have to repeat the whole Oh, okay. So the question was whether the, GD, the GK right, and QT can also uh, benefit from that. Uh, do, you, do you mean the Chromium browser or you mean itself? Yeah, I think so. Basically, if it's possible to avoid the double compositing, it is possible. I mean, we had to use some additional protocols because we, uh, well, as long as like uh, Chrome OS is kind of really closed environment, let's say, we can do there whatever is possible, whatever is convenient for us. But yeah, I think it's that 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 is possible for the GK and get used get this uh, improvement of the performance as well because if the Wayland compositor can do that, why not? Yes. Yeah, basically in, in similar direction, but the Chromium on a regular Linux uh, yes. Wayland compositor. I mean, it, that would benefit from uh, from from such uh, from such features as well. I mean, there's a double compositing. Yes. Again, so have you looked at getting upstream or, or generic protocols to, to manage that. So you have, now you have custom protocols, right? But for it to work on a regular Linux, you need a, uh, yeah, a generic protocol. Do you look at doing that? So the question is basically about uh, if Chromium Linux can benefit from, from the same implementation and whether we considered creating uh, some generic protocol and upstream that. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, if we, we if we get back to to this pixel precision and the rounding corners, um, 
for the pixel pre precision, if the browser doesn't work in like in, a, in a, some custom scale, like it's it's one, right? So it's it's fine. We don't need this kind of protocol. But for the rounded corners, well, probably we could do something like do this processing on the chromium side, but it's not very efficient, right? Mm. Well, it, it should be possible, but. You know, creating a protocol and upstreaming that will it will take some quite some time. I I, I personally did not thought about that, but it's a, it's an interesting concept for the future, of course. I mean, especially for embedded, you can also help if you if part. I'm I'm, I'm guessing part of the subsurfaces are, for example, the video mm -hmm. in in a browser. Ah. And if the the, the compositor on an embedded device can then put that video on a plane, well, and the rest is not rendered, then, then you can benefit from these kind of things much more easily. Yes, of course. You, yes. you delegate all the, the compositing and the, and the compositor can decide what to put on well, the at, Well, at least we can uh, submit this video frame as an overlay. If I'm not mistaken, there was a, there was a from some, some, some somebody uh, doing, doing this, this effort in Chromium, if I'm not mistaken. I actually saw this by the patches. Yeah. Yeah, probably, probably yes, because I, I didn't pay attention to that. I was I was busy with the chromos itself. Yeah. Yes. What's the granularity of these subsurfaces? Like, are we like like how many would you expect to have on on you know on the regular web page? Are we talking like almost every every screen element, or you know is it, is it a more high level thing? How does it compare to like CI layer? Well, if we just take a, a normal page, right? Uh, so, so the question is, how many subsurfaces we are going to have? I mean, how the page is itself like uh, divided? Whether we are going to have each for the each element sub subsurfaces, or it's kind of done in other way? Uh, well, basically, if you if you if you if you imagine a page right uh, as a simple page, there are no additional textures and so on. We can split the the page to the tiles. Like there will be, I don't know how many, maybe six tiles, something like that. So basically, this is how much you are going to send. But if we take like, like for example, motion mark, right? There are some tests like images tests. It can create uh, hundreds of of those textures. Then we are starting to send all of them all over the pipe, but there is a limit for the IPC, so we have to limit this the number of quads that we are able to send. And if I'm not mistaken, it's limited right now to 50, because after this value, it just doesn't make sense to do any delegation. It's kind of become too too expensive in terms of. I mean, there will be too many subsurfaces. If we could like squash this together, that would definitely help. Because it seems like it wasn't like a use case that was thought when the Wayland was was designed. Yeah. So, any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>